and I'm here with Mary Hemingway. You had to think about that, Mary. Yeah, I, I'm getting old. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you enjoying yourself here at Harbor oh, Fest? Yeah, we just got here, and I uh, came last year. It was great. Yeah, what's your favorite thing about uh, about the Harbor Fest? Oh, the music. The music. You like that? Reminds you of your childhood, right? Yeah, my good old days. And the 50s were the best. 50s were the best. I'm with you, Mary. That's yeah. right. Good. Good stuff. Elvis and the Beatles oh and right? Yeah, yes, all that good the whole stuff. Nine yards. Yeah. You live you live in Beverly? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, all my life. All your life? Yeah. Wow. So you're you're a Beverly hardcore Beverly I resident am. and uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, did you come you by yourself or you right? My sister Carol. Yeah. Your sister Carol. Hi, I Carol. Sam Samantha. Yeah. Samantha, come on Sammy. over here. Sammy, come Sammy, on over, come here. over here. Come on over here, Sammy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, you can sit sit between us over here. Okay. And your name is Samantha. And Samantha, is this your first time to uh, Harbor Fest? No. How many times have you been here? I don't really know. Probably couple, about ten couple, times. No, a couple of times. Yeah, probably You're two. You're not that old, Sam. <laughs> We've gone from ten to just a couple. And what school do you go to, Sam? Centerville. Centerville School. That's right by where I live. You know, where do you live? Um, Essex Street. Essex Street. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, I I live right by Centerville School. What grade are you in? Third. Third grade. Wow. And this is your grandma here. No, um, that one. That. <laughs> that 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 one. This here. is my aunt. This is your aunt. Oh, okay. Well, Sam and Mary, thank you very much for talking with us here at, at Arts Fest. All right. Bye. And I'm here with Pete Johnson from Beverly Farms. And I know Pete from uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of different places <laughs> we won't talk about. <laughs> and his wife Joan is over here. Yeah. I wonder if we'll get Joan to, to join us. And I guess I just learned something about you just in the last few minutes that you are an avid kayaker. We are, both of us are, yep. Been yeah. doing it for um, about 30 years. Yeah. And yeah. we keep learning. Yeah. And do you kayak mainly like along the harbor or yeah. the Ipswich River or where? Uh, both. Mostly along. We, since we live in the farms, we typically typically launch in the farms, come down to uh, to the Willows or go up to Manchester. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes we'll we'll put in on the Ipswich River, okay. kayak there. We kayak up in Maine around the islands off of Portland. Yeah. So what makes what makes kayaking really interesting for you? What's it's, what do you like about kayaking? One is it's self-propelled. You travel at your own pace. Yeah. When Joan and I first started, she would row. We started in a canoe. And yeah. she was always in the bow and never never able to choose the direction. <laughs> so we got separate boats and she started rowing in a shell, but she could only see where we'd been instead of where we were going. But it, with two kayaks, it lets us wander off and poke into little nooks yeah. and crannies yeah. and see what you want. And yeah. uh, you travel at your own pace, rest when you want to. Yeah. So she chooses the direction when you're home. <laughs> yeah. It may be a different direction, too. Yeah. So, uh, I, do you see her back there in back of me? Can you wave her over, yeah. or is she? does she see us? Uh, or is she? she got, hey, Joan? Joan? <laughs> Some people like them. She just got a lesson in white. What was your lesson in? Come on, Joan, come on in. And, of course, this is the uh, the prettier half. Uh, the famous. <laughs> of the, the infamous. Th th this is jo Joan. How are you today? I'm fine, thank yep. you. Well, and I just learned from Pete that you guys are avid kayakers and have been for a lot of years. We do enjoy kayaking, yeah. and we have um, a wonderful instructor here from the... Uh, the Coast Guard, yeah. Auxiliary, Rob. Yeah, yeah Bob, Bob Amira. Well, we know Bob very well. Bob has been on Bevcam many times yeah. doing instructions uh, and uh, and uh, kayaking safety tips. Right. And uh, he used to be at the Coast Guard, what was that, the, uh, um, the safety day, Coast Guard safety day up in Gloucester, and he was there. So who started kayaking first, uh, you or Pete? He started uh, two months earlier than I did. Uh, so is this something you did as a married couple or before yeah. you got married? Before we did it as after we got married and it was one of those things we had uh, a canoe first and I was just power. I didn't have any control. So That's I right. didn't go for that. Yeah. So I, I confess to that already. Yeah, we got oh, okay. that story already. We got his version of that story. So now we'll get your version of that. Now any any close calls, any interesting experiences? No, I've Canoeing. been fortunate, because, except one time I did go out, and when I went out, first I checked the weather, and it said that it was going to be fine, and when I went paddled into Manchester Harbor, I heard 
lobster boats behind me yeah. saying, hey, do you think we're going to get that squall? And I turned around and there was a squall coming. It was gray, gray, gray back, but beautiful blue in front of me. Yeah. And so I ended up going to the Manchester Yacht Club and said, I'm not a member here, but could I come and just stay on the dock until the story goes, until the uh, storm goes? Yeah. Yes. Well, there and you that, go. was, that was my closest one. All right, there you go. One in, the, in Portland Harbor, we, we vacationed up there going from Great Diamond to Peaks Island. I was paddling across and I saw a lobster boat coming down the channel and I slowed down and he kept coming. It was a convergence course. I slowed down some more. I started backing up and he went by me about 15 feet in front of me, full speed, on autopilot. Oh he was boy. washing off his boat. First time I've ever heard a lobsterman <laughs> apologize for anything. And he blanched. And one of the things that would have helped was what Bob's showing now, which yes. is reflectors on your paddle. Yeah. So the glint of the reflector, which yeah. might have showed up if this guy had even glanced up. But well, other than that, no. the other well, trick we do is to try to, when we go out to a misery from West, from, from West Beach, we never, on Sundays, we never go out after 10 in the morning because of the cigarette boats. Those oh. guys screaming by there. You just oh, wow. need to pay attention because they don't, they don't look and they can't see where they're going. Well. But, but it's well, good fun. Well, Pete and Joan, the Johnsons, my good friends. Thank you. Thank you for talking with us here at Harbor Fest. As always. <laughs> All right. And I'm here with good friend Bob Amaro. Bob. How do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? You don't have to call me sir. We've known each other. You've Long been on time. we've been on BevCam many times, yeah. right? Giving your PSA announcements. Yes, and we had Boat Safety Day up in Gloucester where you were always there with yep. your paddling demonstration. So how are things going today? We're, this has been a great day, a great bunch of people here. We've talked to a lot of people. You've talked to a couple of my students that I had. These two kids were absolutely unbelievable. Best class I ever had. Yeah. And they're they just they, they preach it, preach it, preach it to everybody. I yep. love them. Yep. So I understand kayaking in the last uh, few years has become one of the biggest uh, participant sports really around. Um, tell it, us about that. Yes, it stats? has. It's, it's unbelievable. Off the top of my head, there's something like 21 million kayakers around. Oh, wow. Okay, And it's grown at like 3% a year. Wow. That's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And then with the paddle boards, today you can use a paddle board for aerobics, mm -hmm. you know, fishing, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's great exercise. So, uh, Bob, tell us, what do you see as uh, some of the, you know, the new kayakers or whatever? What do you see the most consistent mistakes that kayakers make? Life jackets. Life jackets, meaning they don't have them or they, they don't wear they them? They just don't wear them. Yeah. They sit on them, they lodge them in the bow of their boat. Yeah. If the boat, it's funny, in a big boat, you have a minute or two maybe to put it on. Yeah. In a kayak, you're in the water instantly. Yeah. You got no chance to put it on. Yeah, yeah. And we, uh, I know that a few years ago we did the uh, kayaking, the, the sign uh, thing, and I see you've got one inside yep. here. Yep. And how has that worked out? Have you been able to reunite kayakers with their with their kayaks it's really good now because now if i'm on a river i'll i'll talk to one of the kayakers and he says no i already have it yeah so it, it, we're making progress with it yeah yeah fantastic so anyway and you've been kayaking a long time now haven't you about 10 years about 10 years yeah and so tell us what what does the coast guard auxiliary do to help kayakers tell us about the parts uh, the paddle smart program the paddle smart program is absolutely it's a such a positive we've done 33 classes so far this year i've talked to well over 800 kids and and, and the most important thing for me is did they learn something yeah. did they learn how to use a life jacket do they learn and know how it fits you know that that's the key message for us yeah. life jackets life, life jackets yeah. float you don't okay very good well bob amaro thank you very much from the u.s coast guard auxiliary thank you very much for talking with us it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys okay and i'm here with a <laughs> surprise look i'm here with paul earl who is uh, responsible for all this madness now this is what the seventh or eighth uh, harbor fest paul the eighth Eighth Harbor Fest, and of course, BevCam has been down here every year yep. with you. Yep. And every year, you seem to come up with something new and different and exciting. Yeah. Well, this year we were mixing in a couple of new things. We're having boat rides during the uh, three hours on Sea Shuttle, 
people are going out for about 30 minutes and looking at eel grass and it has a glass bottom in the boat so it's really nice it's very educational and he brought his rates way down to make it affordable for everybody who's here right and i saw a good crowd just went out and then the second thing we've done this year it's beverly's 350th anniversary and um we uh are working with a historical society and they're doing right now they're doing a tour of a, a walking tour of the local area and some people went on that tour to mm -hmm. see uh, some of the old houses on Front Street and uh, Water Street which are some of the oldest in Beverly so yeah. Yeah. we keep trying to mix it up we have new food vendors yeah we have some new activities and, um, and we have a lot of people again so yeah. it's good yeah so what kind of feedback do you get from the community when they first come down here to to see this area some people aren't really familiar with it are they well, when we started it eight years ago, uh, we didn't expect to be here eight years later, quite frankly. Uh, we did it to reintroduce this part of Beverly to everybody in anticipation of a restaurant being here. Right. Now, there's a lot of reasons why it isn't. I'm still very uh, confident there will be one, <clears throat> but it just takes a while, and uh, so we keep doing it every year. What we're finding is more and more people contact us this year we didn't have to hunt down any vendors. They contacted us. In the Wonderful. beginning we had to beg people to come. Yeah. Uh, we got about 2,500 people on Facebook who said they were interested, which is way more than we had ever gotten before. Fantastic. And uh, so I think this whole area is much more visible, kind of like the old days when McDonald's was here. Yeah. Well, yep. great job, Paul, and congratulations. And so this is from Harbor Fest, Paul Earl. And I appreciate uh, Walt and Zach and Bevcam covering this event all eight years and I imagine you guys are going to put a little show together we are and absolutely. show it on the channel and anybody who should watch it on the channel watch it on the internet and or if you want a copy of it I'm sure they'd be happy to give you a copy of it absolutely thank you I was supposed to Thanks, say Walt. all that but you're you're all right. <laughs> well I like that cam you know that Walt. <laughs> okay. And I'm here with Chuck Clark, Commander of Bev Commander Beverly Vietnam Veterans. Yeah, and so you're the Commander of Beverly Vietnam Veterans, and you have a, a little booth here at Harbor Fest. So what, what's your aim in, in, uh, in having this booth here? Tell us about the Vietnam Veterans of, of Beverly. We have been uh, raising money for a monument to be put at Vietnam Plaza, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Plaza at One Ellis Square. Um, the, the square was rebuilt a few years ago and there wasn't enough money to do a, a proper monument there so we've been raising money for a couple of years uh, selling t-shirts and sweatshirts and donations and so forth we've uh, raffled off a uh, uh, wood carved chainsaw carved eagle mm -hmm. last year the year before that, we uh, raffled off uh, another wooden uh, chainsaw carving. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've raised $9,300 so far. And how much do you need to do something like that? We need, uh, we're looking right now for the initial thing at $64,000. Mm -hmm. But we've, we've applied for a couple of grants and got them. We got a $15,000 grant from SHRAB. Oh, well, congratulations. We've got a $20,000 grant from the state, uh -huh. thanks to Jerry Paracella. Mm -hmm. And the rest, uh, $9,000 came from uh, Main Streets, okay. who rebuilt the plaza. All right. And we've raised $9,300 so far, not counting today. And how much does that add up to? It's 54000 So, so you're about 10000 10, Now, is the exactly. city giving you any money? Uh, no, but they, they're backing us. We've been working with Kevin Haratunian. Okay, we know uh, Kevin very well. Denise DeChamps. Sure, we know Denise very well. And Catherine Barrett. Okay. The yep. grants writer. Right. And you work with Jerry Gillespie, I understand, as well? Jerry Gillespie's in our group. I think he's in all the groups in Beverly, yep. as, as most of us veterans are. And uh, he was going to be here today, but he had a little uh, something came up and he, he couldn't make it today. But. Yep. Uh, we, we do pretty well. We've, we've set up at the plaza at the block parties and so forth. And so we're, we're down here. We were here last year uh, and did very well. So mm -hmm. 
Well, we, well we're, we, we're going to be working with Jerry to do a regular show uh, with veterans on BevCam, and I'm sure that he'll probably want to uh, make mention of, uh, of this uh, monument in Ellis Square, and maybe we can encourage our viewers to maybe make up that $10,000 gap and, and get that thing done. So what, what uh, do you expect that you might be able to do it? Well, we're almost we're into September now, so uh, we're probably looking for maybe next spring to get it uh, no, installed. We're, we're planning to install it the uh, first part of November and okay. dedicate it Veterans Day. Fantastic. Okay, well, good luck with all of that. Well, thank you for speaking with us, and good luck in the project. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Coming by. Thank you. And I'm here with Aaron Clausen, who is uh, the planning director for the city of Beverly. Aaron, how are you? Very good. Thank good. you, Walt. It's a beautiful day to be on the harbor front. Right. And I see that you have um, uh, in a little exhibit here with some maps talking about some of the harbor front development and some of the big projects that the city is considering and working on. Tell us a little bit about what you're sure. showing here. Sure. So what I brought today was uh, an overview of the scope of the harbor plan. Uh, the planning department's been working with uh, the, the mayor's office and a consultant uh, to develop a, what we call a municipal harbor plan. And we're looking at both the harbor side and we're looking at the Bass River side. And, and what it's really looking at is creating a vision for the, what we do on the land and what we do on the sea and what we do in between to connect those two to improve access to the waterfront for both recreational, commercial users and for the general public. Yeah. Um, I think what this event today is trying to do is get people to the waterfront and enjoy it more so than, than we're able to. What this plan is intending to do is create a, a vision and an action plan to make it more accessible at more times and more places. So this is really uh, about uh, halfway through the process at this yeah. point. Now, I, I was uh, uh, privy, uh, being on the ECDC, about some of the preliminary discussions you had with the Bass River Project. Give us a couple of highlights of what, what may be happening there. On the Bass River Project, yeah. yeah. So what, what we're really looking at with this is first to create the vision. And I think what, uh, what we're, we're hearing from a lot of folks is that, A, you know, we need reasonable redevelopment of the Bass River that is uh, respectful of the, of the scale of downtown, uh, but that in part of that redevelopment improves access to the waterfront. So that's really the key. Um, what we have that's unique about that site is that with the, the Beverly Depot Station uh, being right there is a very active commuter rail line right into the city of Boston um, with it, with trains in the city you know every 20, 20 minutes during the peak period and back out this is a great transit oriented development opportunity so we're looking at ways to bring redevelopment that can improve access uh, create a new neighborhood if you will mm -hmm. and um, and really link up downtown with the Bass River and eventually the entire Bass River and Harbor to be connected all together in one piece. Right. And I know that the uh, city administration uh, is very conscious of making sure that they have public hearings where they invite the public to come in and, and give input on a lot of these things. Right. Uh, uh, when is uh, the next uh, public hearing on, on some of this being uh, being scheduled? Right, so we had, a, as, you, as you mentioned, Walt, there was a couple public meetings uh, back this past spring um, we had a lot of people out, which is great turnout. 100, I think 120 in the first one, which were really mm -hmm. unique for a planning process. So we're happy to have that. Um, the next public hearing or public meeting is going to be in October. We don't have a date scheduled yet. Okay. We're still working on getting a draft plan together. Um, there is an advisory committee meeting coming up in September uh, 20th. Uh, excuse, yeah, except uh, September 20th, uh, and that's a public meeting. People are welcome to join in on that. That's at the high school. Um, but it's not going to be to a plan stage at that point, so not really an opportunity to comment or review a plan. Right. Uh, but in October will be the first chance, and we'll be we'll be advertising and promoting that as much as we can uh, so to, again, get some great turnout and, and more feedback on what we're putting together. All right. Now, uh, right in front of us here is what the old McDonald's building, uh, and the city has been trying to get... Uh, uh, a restaurant tour or someone to take that over and it's we've kind of had fits and starts with that and I know I was talking to the mayor the other day and there's another RFP that's going to be let here pretty soon and uh, what do you expect that might happen from that yeah so the as, as the mayor probably told you we've been working closely with state agencies uh, and developers and, op and restaurant operators to, to determine what is the best approach to reutilize this this property um, and bring a waterfront restaurant to the city it's crazy we don't have a, a waterfront restaurant in the city of Beverly with about 14 miles of <laughs> waterfront, waterfront. Um, 
So it, it is still one of our primary objectives. Um, and so what we've been really doing over the last year is working with state agencies to make sure we can streamline the process, um, working with restaurant operators to better understand what needs they have. And so that when we, when we put together the RFP, um, it's something that we'll see uh, a successful proposal come in and we can actually select somebody to come in and, and bring this right. old building and revitalize it and bring food and some drink uh, to our waterfront. Uh, so we hope to have an RFP out in the next month or two. Right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure everybody is waiting for that structure to come down. Well, anyway, Aaron Clausen, city planner, thank you for talking with us here at Harbor Fest. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm here with... Jackie Maldo of Jackie's Tees and Custom Apparel. Right, and we know Jackie very well because she's been doing a lot of stuff for BevCam the last few years. Thank our, you. Our, our homecoming t-shirts and so forth. So tell us, what's going on here, Jackie? What are you doing with the kids and t-shirts here? So here at the Beverly Harbor Fest 2018, we are having a great time. We have our IT guy, Adam Taglieri. Hello. <laughs> Adam, you come up to the monitor and you tell Adam what is your favorite character, and in this case, somebody has a hold up the sh this. Ragnarok from Fortnite. Fortnite! Of course, okay. we're going to do a Fortnite shirt. Okay. So Adam prints it out, right? Yeah. So how do you print it out? Um, you hit control P. Okay, <laughs> control P. And then wait for it to load. And then you can change all the different settings to make it fit the um, shirt. Yeah, okay. And then um, if you want to print it, then when you get to print it, you hit okay. print. All right. You hit print again. It's connected right to our high-end yep. fancy printer. And then is it going to print? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it going to come out any second now? Okay. It yeah. says oh, it, it says printing. printing. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. And what is this thing called? What is this character called? Ragnarok. 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 Okay, Ragnarok. Does anybody know that? Right Ragnarok. over here. Anybody under twenty? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So All right. So now. show show the camera. Hold it steady. Hold it real steady in front of you. All right. And that's Ragnarok. All right. So now what do we do with it? We pass it over to our director of production, Alia Taglieri. Same last name. Okay. So th <laughs> this is Alia. Oh, this is your sister. And yep. what's your name again? Alia Taglieri. And what are you going to do, Alia? I'm going to put this piece of paper yep. on the shirt. On the shirt. Okay, show yeah, us how you do it. Here we go. Here's a, here's a, at okay. the bottom. Here's a t-shirt. We'll do oh, okay. extra small. Okay. So. And we do this at our shop as well, so feel free to come up to 238 Rantoul Street, Jackie's Tees, right next to the castle. <laughs> so, you first have to iron it to get all the wrinkles out. Okay, so you're ironing it to get all the wrinkles out, right? Yes. Okay. For 10 seconds. 10 seconds, okay. And then... Take it and you put it in the middle. Okay, you put it in the middle, and then you press it for 15 seconds. And you got a little read out there, a or timer going you? down? Yeah. Yeah. Six, seven, Usually, but now eight, it's four. This is the two minutes, and we count. We count together. <laughs> Twelve. 13, 13, 14, 14 15. 15. Yay, the magic Yay. of TV. All right. Take it off, shake it out. And right now, that was 500 pounds of pressure wow. that was pressing the ink into the fibers of the shirt. Okay. So that you can wash it over and over and it's not going to come out. Okay. And what kind of colors are those? What are they made out of? They're That's just your basic inkjet ink. Okay. And then we use the, you'll see next up is the fabric markers. Yeah. And the kids get to color their own artwork as our friend right here is doing with her yeah. unique cat character. All right. <laughs> okay. So she's, so, okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Show us that it's for Zach that. to set that up. Okay. So that's it's it. perfect. Perfect. And, then, <laughs> and now what do they do? Are they going to color it, color it in? Or, With okay. fabric marker. Oh, fabric marker. And then do you have to do anything after that or is it ready to go? Do you have to... Do you have to no, we don't. We used to pre-press them again, but the colors don't come out. The fabric markers are so okay. vibrant. Okay, okay. Oh, Jackie, thank you Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, we do birthday parties. Same $10. You can pick a character. You can come down to us, bring pizza and cake, or we'll come to you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bebcam. Everything you do. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. <laughs> And I'm here with Aaliyah Taglieri and Sophia Varmat and Haley Mitchell. And you ladies were watching the magic show, right? What did you think of the magic show? It was awesome and weird and cool and crazy. Yeah. Did you like the tricks? Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite trick? Um, I think the cereal one. The cereal one? Yeah, where they pick, where they picked the card out and then they um they had all these cereal cards and then 
then what they did is they said where there's like a lot of blue cards and there's, there's always one red card. He said, you picked the right one and then it had a different color on the back. Wow. And what was your favorite trick? Probably the cereal one again. The I cereal like that one, one too. Yeah. 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 It was cool. Yeah. And who brought you down to uh, to Harbor Fest today? Did you come with your mom? Yeah, she's not over here right now. She's not over here right now. Okay. And that's your mom over there. Mom is mom is gonna. Did you take a picture, mom? Did you take a picture of us with your camera? Oh, she did. Okay. So she'll be on television. You'll be on Bevcam. Okay. And you just tell your moms to. Uh, to get the uh, to get the uh, Beverly Citizen, don't run away yet, and and look for this show, and we'll be showing this Harbor Fest. Okay, it's called Harbor Fest. All right, ladies. What's the channel called? Uh, it's called Bevcam. It's Channel Eight. Okay, okay. Channel Eight. Do you have do you have cable in your house? Okay, so you have. Yeah. yeah. They have cable. So Channel Eight, and then we'll we'll let you know when this is going to be on. Okay, and you'll be on television. You'll be television stars. What do you think of that? Um, really cool. My mom was on Chopped, and yeah. and I was in the newspaper, and, a, and I was in a commercial. So this. Wow! Well, you're an old veteran. You're a star already. I, I always wanted to be on TV. All right, this is your chance to be on TV. All right, what do you think? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Okay.